Hello, today is the 12th, and we're here with the level one news. The 12th, is it the 12th? Oh, there's a month that goes with it. November, it's November 12th. It's fine, they can see the published date. It's fine, it's in November. No, we can 2019. We occasionally get comments that are like, this news is how old? And it's a comment from like two years ago. I don't know, it's an algorithm. We also Yeah, I don't know why sometimes they get promoted. We also get a lot of comments where it's like, I really wish you guys would say which sites you got these from. I would like to go and read this for myself. And it would be a lot better if I could do that. So never count on the YouTube user to pay attention to text of any kind. <laughs> yeah, in the description there's a one tab. And it, there's also like if you just look at the video. I mean, I know a lot of people listen to it, but like if you look at the video, it'll show you a screen grab. Of there's it. literally a list of links you can click on. Anyway. So let's start out this week by talking about Donald Trump. Because everybody loves stories about Donald Trump. Except oh. it's not really about Donald Trump. It's about someone that Trump appointed to the chief technical officer. And he had a lot to say. And if you just peel back a very thin layer of it, just peel back the, you know, that little layer that sets up on the top of your gravy. If you just peel that back, it's terrifying. Trump's CTO addresses AI, facial recognition, immigration, tech infrastructure, and more. Michael Kratosis? Kratosios? I don't know how do you say that. Let's just call him Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a comic book reference. The fourth U.S. chief technology officer. No. Video game. Video game. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's Stanford Institute for Human Centered Artificial Intelligence. So this is supposed to be like human respecting AI, but at least it's not as bad as the guy in Japan who's never used a computer. So they have, <laughs> That's the only thing we can say that's good about this. It's not as bad as their guy. They ask a lot of questions. China. China. Uh, <laughs> China. Facial recognition, biometrics, tech infrastructure, immigration, you know, because ICE uses all that stuff. His answer was always the same. His answer was always like, you know, I wouldn't worry about that because we're going to put all these things, these rules in place. And we're a big fan of rules and there should be rules. Did I mention the rules? <laughs> he didn't ever go into depth, but it was always just like, don't worry about that because we're going to create these rules and it's not going to be a big deal. Now, the facial recognition and biometrics one is a big one in particular. If you look at this guy's history, specifically this previous Peter workplace. Peter Thiel, no. Yes, that is the Peter Thiel Palantir owner. Now, he did not work there. He worked at that guy's capital firm, but we've seen how Peter Thiel feels about... <laughs> Slayer of Gawker. Biometrics. <laughs> Bolsterer of Hulk Hogan. I mean, he literally created a company named after an evil spying tool. <laughs> that is an Te evil spying tool. <laughs> Technically, it's not... It's how you use it, and like it's used later in the books for like good, but that's fine. In this case, yes, it's evil. Well, sure. I mean, you could probably use it for that, but... When has anyone in power had that option and used it for good? It's used as a, like a telephone in the books. Well, that's a fantasy world, Krista. We're talking yeah. about the real world where <laughs> these people are. Where people use phones to spy on you. Yeah. <laughs> the real world where basically everyone is bad universe Saruman. Yeah. And that's true in our world here. So this guy probably is Saruman. He doesn't consider himself, but he is. So... A lot of this is really an end run around um, public concern so that business can do business because states are doing things that are maybe in the public good, but we'll, we'll talk about more more about that in the business section because we got some some doozy stories on this he did, and the other. He echoed the, the pie sentiment. It's like, no one wants a patchwork of rules. We need federal rules. <laughs> and there are going to be rules. Rules, 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 rules. So it's the same answer. The federal it. rules are that big business can make money on that data any way that they choose. I'm, I'm kind of seeing why Trump appointed him. Yeah. We just say a bunch of buzzwords. Yeah. Turns it out. So the government is going to track us. Oh, wait. They already track us. <laughs> Homeland Security will soon have biometric data on nearly 260 million people. The author of this article is not asking how exactly Homeland Security got iris scans of 260 million people. I don't know about you, but when I went to get my driver's license renewed, I did not have to scan my retinas. But if you went to an eye doctor, you probably did. But that was data collected for medical purposes. Mm -hmm. There are laws about medical data. <laughs> so yeah, they point out that uh, this is 40 million ahead of the projection that they made themselves. They were like, ah, oh, we thought we'd get 220, but guess what? We're ahead. 
And uh, it's a lot, to, you know, they collect a lot of stuff for criminals and people who are, you know, being searched for for bad reasons. <laughs> but there's also a lot of innocent people getting caught up into this. <laughs> Anybody that's submitted their DNA to Ancestry.com, for okay. example. Okay, let's see. Like, who of the level one crew do you think is not in this? Do you th- I don't think Ryan is. Well, listen, no, I'm, he definitely is. I haven't been to an optometrist yeah, in 10 years. Yeah, he's been years. to an eye doctor in ages, so <laughs> your eye I scans, go every year. Your eye scans aren't in there, but everything else probably is. So how many people we got? 260 is not... How many? We have uh, like 400 million, is it now? Yeah. So more than half? More than half. The elderly and the children are the only people not in the database. Oh, I bet children are more children likely are absolutely, than absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because they're getting... They're going to go to the now. eye doctor. Well, well their retina is going to change as they age a little bit. Oh, well, That's not important. You just scan it anyway. <laughs> Don't worry about, you know, accuracy or privacy, any of that. It doesn't matter. So a... National database is one thing, and that's terrifying, and it's probably going to end badly. But we can't stop there, right? Because there's people all over the world. How can we just spy on our own people? We need to know about everything. And for that, we go to the military. Exclusive. This is how the U.S. military's massive facial facial recognition system works. Now, you'd be thinking, this is members of the U.S. military. Okay, yeah, that's part of it. But these are also allied forces. Basically, anybody that's working with the U.S. military, which is a lot of people. And terrorist suspects. If you get on the wrong side of the military and they capture you, you go in the database. Is this the one where they talk about the drug runner from Miami? And they, they caught her on the uh, on the runway? Because they were... It was a wife. Yeah. It was a girlfriend. Yeah. On the runway. So they... Uh, the guy was from uh, Mexico or South America, I think. And they had... So it's not just you. It's also your known accomplices. So she had flown with him. <laughs> Travel companions. Three times she had gone on vacation or something with him. And they were like, yeah, but he's banging her. And they got her on the runway. And she had methamphetamine in her neck pillow, purse, <laughs> and vagina. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Well, we shouldn't laugh about that because... They were not suspected of any wrongdoing. It was just an unusual travel pattern, and they were uh, selected for extraordinary whatever. Like, they had gotten through. They were literally about to board the plane, and it was like, wait a minute, they were flagged by the database. What does that say about, you know, Homeland Security and Customs? Well, how many times has this happened for an innocent citizen, and it has not made the news? And it's like, oh, we caught one after inconveniencing tens of thousands of travelers, international and otherwise. I'm sure there's lots of Twitter complaints about it. <laughs> That's what people do with airlines anyway. You know, I don't think you tweet much if you're a cartel wife. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they probably do. They probably do, yeah. So you might not mention what your boyfriend or husband does. It's just like, oh, going for, for another vacation this weekend. My like, ba- how do they afford that? <laughs> My backup gig is a... Uh, <laughs> is an Instagram thought. <laughs> Maybe that's how they met. Trump, uh, we remember Trump introduced his space plan. He wanted to get back to the moon. He wanted to do so really, really quickly. And he wanted to make the, the moon lunar base for refueling and then eventually Mars. Well, for some reason, a bunch of senators got together and they say, we're going to make our own space plan. It's going to be better. <laughs> a bipartisan group of senators wants to extend the space station to 2030. It doesn't explicitly mention the moon mission, but it doesn't rule it out either. So, uh, I think in Trump's plan, he wants to abandon the space station in what, 2024? Soon, yeah. And let it go private. Turn it over to private hands, let them handle it, like our other space launches. These guys want to keep it for whatever reason. It is kind of nice to invest in NASA because we get a lot of cool stuff from them. NASA. Yeah, but the space station is, you know, yeah, it's, it's, like dirty it's just ongoing. Old. Yeah, well, it's, ongoing it's maintenance. In bad shape. So not really getting a lot of innovation out of that. Probably. I think the idea they want is uh, the space station will still be like a, a halfway point where you can do stuff. Yeah. With your long term missions. <laughs> a space gas station. Except they don't have any fuel that they can spare. I but they've think. got they've got Slim Jims though. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what matters. Slim Jims you and Ho Hos. You can get a three dollar Mountain Dew. Code Red Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's in There's space. There's a beer cave. Because they're the only game in town that's going to be a $300,000 Mountain Dew. <laughs> that's true, but you get a lot of uh, recurring points. <laughs> Was so, it like, Imperion? The fifth one is free. They introduced like the, the space station thing, and like there was stuff you could buy there, but it was all like an obscene amount of credits. I don't think they implemented the credit system, so there was no way to get credits. Oh, okay, yeah. that was. We need to revisit that game anyway. Not related. So, uh... 
facial recognition, you know, we talk about the government. They're already in on it. And even though they're in on it, they're behind the private sector because the private sector is what's, you know, innovating and creating the facial recognition. Amazon's ahead of everybody. I mean, not only have they got the facial recognition, but they're creating a giant spy network out of our homes. It's brilliant. <laughs> and the problem with that is people are slowly starting to figure it out. And, you know, we've how many cities now? Is it five or six? Yeah, that have banned facial recognition. They've, they've said no to it. So obviously, if you're a big corporation, you got to get ahead of that. IBM calls for regulation to avoid facial recognition bans. Good job, Axios author who saw through the crap. So IBM is, is, is sort of... I, I love when citizens are like, hey, this is maybe a bad idea. And corporations are like, let's co-opt that and pervert the original purpose that this was started, which is what's happening here. This is legislation for face recognition to avoid the possibility that the technology will be banned outright. I set up some rules... But, uh, yeah, so notice and consent, export controls, and law enforcement discloses when they're using it. Those are pretty loose. (laughs) These all seem to benefit IBM. That's a far cry from don't do it, which is what a lot of the cities have done. So, yeah, that's quite a compromise if you're anti-facial recognition. But we'll see. The other thing is, you know, we talk about the biometrics, of course, and Peter Thiel and his evil Palantir, which is not necessarily evil, but just used for evil. It's important that we point <laughs> that out. It's an important distinction and, based uh, on the lore. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're new here, welcome to level one. But facial biometrics, and then the one that we don't think about as much, but has been around the longest, is DNA. Your DNA profile is private? Question mark, says the New York Times. Uh, Florida judge just said otherwise. Now, this was paywalled, but I read this elsewhere. And uh, a Florida judge has said, no, you, you know, your DNA profile, that is not private. We can collect that and use it for whatever, even if you're not suspected of a crime. So it's Gedmatch, is that what the name of it was? That one? The oh, one yeah. that you upload your own stuff to. Uh, there was a cop. An investigator and he was looking into cold cases and he was using this DNA stuff and he was actually getting some hits and he was like progressing but then they passed that law that said hey you can't just go fish in the DNA database that's not legal stop doing that and he was like well I can't solve these murders so he went to a judge and here we go you can do that with the judge's permission which sets a terrible precedent don't when a Christmas time comes around, one gift that you should not get and throw in their face if you receive <laughs> is the DNA kit. That's You're how just, they caught the Golden State Killer. That's just high level snitching. Don't do it. <laughs> that poor guy, he's probably like, I think they said that when they finally caught him, he was like in his 70s, and he's probably like, I got away with it. I murdered all those people. You know, they said he was really resigned when they found him. And maybe he was just old, but uh, he it seemed like. Old. He had been living in terror the entire time, and it was just kind of like, okay, it's over. One of his relatives, like, though, he, he probably thought he got away with it. One of his relatives did a DNA test and screwed mm. him. We've been talking about uh, encrypted DNS for a couple of weeks now. And, you know, Google's arguing about it, and the big uh, ISPs are arguing about it. And no. everybody's giving disinformation. Who do you trust? Everybody's tracking everybody else. And now Mozilla has stepped in. Ars Technica has the article with the headline that ISPs lied to Congress to spread confusion about encrypted DNS, according to Mozilla. So I don't don't disagree with this. There are some competing standards for encrypted DNS, and Mozilla and Google uh, are sort of imagining different implementations of what encrypted DNS is. But yeah, the ISPs are super against this, which is weird because the ISPs are also saying that they're for privacy. I can't think of a legit reason that ISPs would be freaking out about this unless they're doing what they say they're not doing, which is mining your data. Although <clears throat> the statement ISPs lied to Congress is a safe one to make any day of the week. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you do have to qualify. It's uh, we've got at least three more stories this week that would qualify as ISPs lying to Congress, including one FTC settlement. We talk a lot about electric scooters. Uh, we just got electric scooters in a nearby city and i think in the first week somebody got hit by a car yeah they did but it wasn't it wasn't the person on the scooter's fault the person who was driving the car was drunk so doesn't make them any less hit does it no it doesn't 
So uh, it's it's contentious, and a lot of cities are saying they don't want them. There was that thing in uh, which city was it that said you have to get a uh, permission for emergent technology? I think it was San Francisco. San Francisco, I think. So it's it's kind of like are, are these a nuisance? Well, L.A. has found uh, another way to approach the problem. L.A. has suspended Uber's permit to rent out electric scooters and bikes. Oh no! Better to ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> and in fact, you aren't supposed to have to ask for permission to do this kind of thing. It's so new. Oh, excuse me. Oh. It's so new that... Uh, you have a frog in your throat. Oh, that was a hiccup. And uh, I lost my thought now. That was so violent. <laughs> you don't have to have a permission. The technology yeah, yeah, is so it's, new. It's so new. And so they just did it. And now we're like, should we let this happen? Uber, of course, is fighting it. But uh, they pointed out something else I wanted to bring up about the story. The hiccup has robbed me. <laughs> Uber, Uber was going to sue the city. I didn't think that the city was allowed to do this after the fact. Oh, yeah. Uber, Bird, Lime, and Lyft are all active in L.A. That's got to be a lot of scooters. 32,000 scooters. About mm-hmm. 1 million trips a month, which would seem to indicate it's a popular service. Yeah, people seem to like it. I noticed some of the some of the vloggers in New York all have the uh, electric skateboards, and they're just mixed in with traffic. It seems like that's a death trap. Um, that's called the boosted board. <laughs> I've also watched those vlogs. I don't really understand the hype. I kind of wonder if it was product placement. It's like, wow, this seems like you're gonna die. Those yeah. cabbies don't do not care. I feel bad for the drivers, but I think overall that's a good thing, right? That they're not on the sidewalk. No, yeah. that they'll die. Oh, no. oh. That's a darker take on it, but sure. <laughs> Speaking of California, we have several Cali. This is the California block. Oh man! And uh, California has a track record of being at the forefront of going after the big corporations, especially big tech, because they live out there. California likes to mess with them, likes to get money off of them. And what is a bigger, juicier target than Facebook? <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> there is Facebook's juiciness is second to none. There's a lot of Bloomberg articles this week. Yeah. The first one is Facebook was sued by California to get answers on user privacy. Facebook's press people are on top of this though. The Bloomberg the quotes for Bloomberg were amazing. It was like we are like super complying with anything that uh, California is interested in. We are confident that they're not going to find any evidence of wrongdoing and all this stuff. But we've got some more stories about stuff in other legal proceedings from Facebook this week, and uh, it's going to get dicey. So this is about Cambridge Analytica, and you're thinking, wow, that was a long time ago. And California says, that's the point. We've been trying to get this information from them for years, and they're just you know, slow playing us, and we don't like it. <laughs> so they have gone to lawsuit to try and get all that information. <laughs> There's also, it's like, everybody remember the story about 643? We covered that. We've got a lot more coming, but that's in the business section. And more. So California, I guess, may be a little bit, shy after being bitten by the scooters <laughs> is kind of being more proactive when it comes to robot taxis. The Los Angeles Times says Waymo wants to offer robo taxis in California, but the state insists that they be free. This, I, this is just the way the law is written right now. So uh, Google has this Waymo self-driving service for their employees and it shuttles them around the bay and it is a free service right now. But Google is saying, or Waymo is saying, we want to experiment with different fee structures and we're not permitted to do that under the law. So we need to change the law. Yeah, well I think California's resisting it. I think they're saying no, keep the free stuff. Until we figure this out, yeah. And one of the arguments is, you don't need the money. And Google's like, yeah, we know that. We could buy and sell you. (laughs) But it's important that we use a fee because we gotta figure out what people are willing to pay and what they're not. This is part of our research. You gotta let us do this. And California says, I don't know. Give us some of that money and maybe we will. That's exactly what that means. And one of the reasons that people of California hate big tech companies is because they have to pay two million dollars for a shed to live in. <laughs> and the big tech companies are definitely feeling the backlash from that. Was it uh, Facebook that already announced their plan? Yeah, yeah. I think it was Facebook. To build housing, yeah. Apple is basically doing the exact same thing. Apple has announced a $2.5 billion plan to ease the California housing crisis. 
uh, they are not giving any, they're giving, I think, a few million dollars to like the homeless, but this is to actually like do real estate. Apple's probably going to end up making money on this in the long run. Yeah, I was going to say, estate. almost every comment I've seen on this has been like, this isn't really charitable though. This is like just <laughs> adding to your real estate portfolio. That's not really helping anybody. Well, they're going to, they already have a bunch of land. They're going to buy more land. They're going to put houses on that land and they're going to put Apple workers in those houses. So <laughs> And continue to own everything. Yeah. Wasn't Didn't we have this in feudal England? Like, wasn't this a thing? <laughs> oh my gosh, they're not employees, they're serfs. <laughs> well, you can make that argument about all of us at this point. But they are going to give some money to non-Apple people. I can't remember what the split is, but I mean, it's a lot of money. And they're spreading it around... Uh, 300 million towards the affordable housing and Apple owned and 150 million towards Bay Area housing fund and a billion a billion or is that the breakdown of that oh, no that's additionally so 1 billion to affordable housing fund a billion for mortgage uh, so mortgage you're still assistance. you're still buying the house yourself yeah are they just lending you money <laughs> <laughs> yeah it doesn't really make any sense does it only 50 million of that is going to what I would I would say is like legit things to help uh, people that have already sort of fallen into the system. I don't think anybody cares about those people. Well, it's, it's, you just need workers to service your, your, you know, I would be the castle people. I would be concerned that Apple would employ people and be very abusive of them. And it's like, all right, quit your job and also get out of your house. Get out of your house and give back your meal ticket and everything else I'm, yeah i mean employers could use that as a as leverage and they absolutely will if there is any kind of even remotely uh serviceable leverage there and your health insurance and everything else <laughs> yeah. God, that's <laughs> yeah. slightly dystopian the Pro- housing is probably more yeah. disturbing but that sounds like something that might happen in china <laughs> you know what else happens in china theft intellectual theft and they're not very um, apologetic or they don't really try to hide it. It's kind of like, yeah, we're going to do that because look how successful we are doing it. <laughs> try to stop us, bro. And we can't, but we're trying. <laughs> the New York Times has an article about a vast dragnet targets uh, targeting theft of biomedical secrets for China. Nearly 200 investigations are underway at major academic centers. Critics fear that researchers of Chinese descent are being unfairly targeted. Eh. Is it unfair? We're gonna have it's definitely happening. We're gonna have several articles this week where it's like I don't know if you can trust you know the Chinese person or the Russian person working on the project because they may be doing espionage. They may be a spy spent, sent to work for your organization to steal your stuff. This is happening even in academia. So these are not Chinese nationals. These are American citizens who are of Chinese descent. Kind of, you know, it might be like a long game that they're playing here. Some of them were even born in the country, but they have ties to these countries and they've uncovered them sending messages and secrets back from universities. So these are situations where, like, okay, our our corporations are protecting their secrets, but the universities by design are meant to share the knowledge, and it's supposed to be safe to let them study it. Well, no, it's not, because these people are funneling it back well it's also uh more nuanced than that because you know imagine that you immigrated here a couple generations ago but you still got you know uncle eddie over in mainland and it's like look you need to send us copies of your research or uncle eddie's gonna lose a kidney or a lung or something or you just won't have an uncle eddie anymore nobody liked him anyway Uh. he was the weird uncle (laughs) so in china not only are they stealing things, but they love to play games. Oh boy, do they love to play games. And the Communist Party, they're a little out of touch, would you say? A little. A little out of touch. And when they see people playing video games, they're like, oh, that's going to rot their brains. <laughs> they're back in the 80s in terms of you know video game propaganda. And they've decided that they've got to do something about it. And they're going to do something pretty dramatic. China's miners face new limits on mobile games in the war on gaming edition. 90 minutes a day on work days and uh, no gaming after between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. And 180 minutes on holidays and weekends. So max three-hour binge. 
of your favorite game, Krista? In the in the roll queue system in Overwatch, if you're queuing for DPS, man, that's like two games in that time period. Tough, tough it's on rough. those uh, Overwatch players. I was thinking about like Red Dead. Does does fighting with the launcher count against your limit? Because like if you spend two or three hours troubleshooting your computer, trying to get the launcher to work, as was recently experienced by many players of Red Dead Two for PC, does that count? Because that seems like an unfair thing. So uh, you might be thinking, how are they going to enforce this? This seems unenforceable. Who's going to stop me from playing online games? Well, they're building systems where it's always connected. And that maybe even facial recognition is going to play into it to force you to not only invade your privacy, because they love to do that, and they've already got the system for it, but to make sure that you're only playing games a certain amount of time. Oh my gosh, it's, we're, it's going drink verification can. We're getting one step closer <laughs> yeah. to the 4chan reality. It is getting very <laughs> close to that. Could, oh, that'd be a way, if this was America, it would be you buy credits for more free time. Well, think about that. What if you had three hours a day to sell and there was an open market? <laughs> wow. Yeah. You would make a lot of money or you would be well, severely in debt. I don't know if it would probably balance out because like grandma's got hours. Well, no, but she's not. It has to be, what was it, 18 to 18 and under or? It's something like that, yeah. 13 to 18, I don't remember, but. Those people, if you could find somebody who didn't care about gaming and you could farm them, that would be huge. <laughs> there's like, in some alternate reality, there's like an R relationship advice from like a teenager who's like, I think my boyfriend's just with me for my gaming credits. <laughs> or <laughs> the darkest timeline where, you know, when like a, an old person will die and they won't report it so they can keep getting the benefits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a child dies, but they don't report it because oh. they're selling their gaming credits. <laughs> I gotta play WoW. <laughs> His brother is addicted to PUBG. Wasn't WoW Gold like a, a currency pretty much in China for a while? Like they had gold yeah. farmers? Well, they still have it in you know, any economy where it's worth more than the local currency. It makes sense. So you're telling me next week we'll do stories all like this? <laughs> well, they don't have that. Huh. So you, it's Yet. they're working hard to make sure that you can't do something like that. So I don't know. We talked about uh, Apple... And they're getting slaughtered in China on the hardware sales. Huawei killed them with phone sales. And Tim Cook has been going over there and trying to you know, make things right. And it's, this is why a story like this is not a surprise at all. Apple's going to do whatever China tells them to do. Bloomberg has the article about iPhones are big in China, but Apple services play gets mired in censorship. What kind of sentence is that? But yeah, I don't know. Apple services play. Apple services play. I interpreted uh, this as Apple's doing the Apple TV thing, and that content is going to be censored. And there's also the Apple App Store. Those apps are going to be censored. There is the Hong Kong app. Those are going to go away. Yeah, it's, it's App Store apps and uh, TV stuff. We talked about that before. That's not really new news. I think it's just sort of like the aggregate of everything. Apple is doing anything they can to please the Chinese government. Was it, wasn't it true, like, growing up, you were led to believe that, like, exporting our melting pot culture was, like, good for the world or something? This seems like not that. But China believes the opposite of that. <laughs> and and there's, they have money. I mean, if you are selling your citizens on one kind of utopia, but they see on the screen a totally different kind of utopia. That might lead to some dissent. Both of which are false, by the way, before you start <laughs> commenting. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying, you know, both the, the Communist Party's lies and Hollywood's lies are in competition. So, yeah, you got to get rid of that. Oh, that's terrifying. And... The Chinese censors, you got to give them credit, right? Because no stone remains unturned. <laughs> like, yeah, the guys at the top are worried about Apple and, you know, that kind of stuff and Twitter and the big things. But somewhere down in the basement in a windowless room, <laughs> somebody's working on stock photography. <laughs> the Intercept has this fascinating article about Shutterstock's employees fighting the company's new Chinese search blacklist. So Shutterstock, they make a lot of money selling stock photography. In order to be able to sell stock photography in China, you need to not be able to search for things like Tiananmen Square. Or Hong Kong. <laughs> you can't search for Hong Kong on Shutterstock in China right now. 
which I, mean, <laughs> I think the people of China know that Hong Kong exists. <laughs> What's going on with this stock photo, Krista? What is that? I, I don't really understand. I think it's supposed to be like a search button, but like it's being shattered by it almost, China. But it almost looks like an animal of some kind. Oh, yeah, I guess it's just breaking. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a search button at the end of an input bar. Uh, that's an okay. It's not great. I was thinking it was moving forward, but I realized this is just the text input. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I, I wonder what their policy is about weird photos of like, Half naked women that aren't really related to the thing you searched for. Well, like, I put an accountant, but this woman's half dressed. I don't understand. <laughs> it's not the results. It's you cannot perform certain searches. Oh, at all. Right. Yeah. So, I, Hong Kong naked girls? No. No. Regular naked girls? Okay. I always wonder when I see posts like that. It's like, do you think that they told their mom like, oh, I'm just doing some stock photography, but it's really like. It's a no. loophole, I yeah, guess. But then would mom be like, oh, can I see it? Probably, yeah. Or it's like, oh, it's just really boring corporate stuff. You don't want to see it. <laughs> or sometimes there's that mom who's like, you know, into it. It's like, you know what? You could have shown more. <laughs> you mean like uh, the Kardashian mom? God blessed you with a beautiful labia, honey. Ugh. You show it to the world. <laughs> there goes the monetization. <laughs> I don't know if Google will. Will they? Yeah. Catch that. Is love you a bad word? Probably. That's a reflection on uh, YouTube's it's not misogyny. advertiser friendly. <laughs> I think Nerd City already demonstrated that with their. Uh... Oh, yeah. Well, there was that giant <laughs> list of words. Yeah. yeah. It, there was a lot that were just strange. But anyway, <laughs> we've got a lot so, of tangents today. Uh, China and Russia, as we have talked about before, they tend to steal some of your secrets. And they're not really shy about it, they're good at it. And they're not shy about it. So more and more companies have to ask themselves, how do we deal with this? And the answer may seem a little bit racist, but what are you going to do? GitLab considers a ban on new hires in China and Russia due to espionage fears. This is an upcoming discussion that they're being very candid about online. You know, GitHub or GitLab is a uh, you know distributed company. They've got people that work all over. They do not currently have anybody... Uh, in China or Russia working, but they do have a lot of enterprise customers and their enterprise customers, there's an open source product of course too, but their enterprise customers are concerned that um, GitLab employees might have access to their customer data in supporting those customers. And so they're saying, hey, uh, maybe we don't hire from those countries as a solution. There's one engineering job that has full access because they have to have it. So do you hire someone in China or Russia who is all of a sudden going to have full access to all of these repos company-wide? Does that make sense? Are your customers going to be worried about that? Should they be? <laughs> Turns out the customers are worried about that preemptively. And they probably should be. So, <laughs> uh, Speaking of Russia, Vladimir Putin has decided, and now they have gone on ahead with their plan to segregate the Russian Internet. Not really, but... They kind of have like a panic switch where they can sever all the ties, so they claim. I don't know if we've seen it in action yet. And because of that, they can now control every artery and vein of the Russian internet, which is probably the goal all along. And when you do that, you can do this. Vladimir Putin calls for a reliable, in quotation marks, Russian version of Wikipedia, according to The Guardian. Uh, he said something to the effect of, we used to have the Russian National Encyclopedia. We need the online version of that, again, that is reliable. And then the, the closing line of this article, it's, I figured that the author would have a lot of opportunity to describe like terrible things that have, that have happened as a result of Wikipedia. But the article, the article author only has the one closing line, which is, all of Wikipedia was banned one time uh, over some really minor thing. And that's it. That's all. Like, what would it be editorializing though? To in, in, well, I want to know precisely in what way is Wikipedia unreliable? They might not know, it might have just been a one off statement. Like, he could have been talking about something else entirely, and then he just kind of slipped that in there. Like, (laughs) by the way, Wikipedia going away, not a thing, or we're going to copy paste it into uh, you know, something special run by the state. I think Wikipedia can be unreliable in that the mob, you know, gets an idea and silences any. A dissenting idea. <laughs> like when uh, they were replacing pictures of uh, the uh, rat singer, the Pope, with uh, Palpatine. 
I mean, they do look kind of alike. No, that's not at all what I'm talking about. <laughs> Germany has uh, decided that they want to get rid of internal combustion engines. Uh, what was it by 2035 or something like that? It's pretty yeah. ambitious. And they are throwing money at it. German government expands subsidies for electric cars, but not expensive electric cars. If it costs more than, I think, 60,000 euro, no subsidy for you. But um, Might between. Have been 40, uh, there 40,000. There's a There's a lesser subsidy. So at the low end, you get a pretty hefty subsidy. It was up to like six thousand euro or something. It's yeah. up sixty seven hundred. That's sixty seven hundred US thousand. Yeah. And uh, hybrids yeah, are up to three thousand euro. Forty four thousand five hundred is the cutoff. Yeah. So you can't buy your Taycan with a subsidy, but you can get a middle of the road electric car. I can't help but notice that these prices seem to be mostly for Volkswagen. Although I guess the Tesla Model 3 would fit in here as well. I, but not the Model S. Well, it would be the base Model 3, right? Yeah. Like if you option out a Model 3, it goes above 44.5 pretty quickly. Yeah. But Volkswagen. The Volkswagen has got, uh, you know, lots of models. Well, not yet, right? Like they're coming soon. I uh, guess well, they have some now. Yeah, the, they said that they had some that were coming in 2020. So that's just right around the corner. You said it would be hard for them to get rid of cars by 2035, but I don't think, like, they take a lot of public transport, and their country's small. I bet that's probably not impossible. Probably difficult, but not impossible. Well, one of the other things the article mentioned was Merkel uh, wants to have a million charging stations by then, but the specific short-term goal is to move from 25,000 charging stations to 50,000 charging stations, which is quite a bit shy of a million charging stations, so... Moving on to security, we talk a lot about hospitals getting hacked. And that is a particular dangerous thing. There was, where was the hospital where they just started turning people away? Uh, that was the three hospitals. Texas. Yeah. It was in Texas. So they, and it shut down the entire community of hospitals. And unless you were dying as you came in the door, they just sent you right back out. Just turn your wheelchair around, get the fuck out because <laughs> we got hacked and they, lo- they couldn't give drugs. They couldn't do anything. You and your stones need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, really. Just go home and cry. Which is what I should have done anyway. It would save me a lot of money. And uh, so now they're studying like what is the ultimate cost in human life of ransomware. It's kind of surprising. Ransomware data breaches at hospitals is tied to uptick in fatal heart attacks. And Krebs on Security has this article. It's kind of fascinating. Correlation is not necessarily causation, but it is interesting that the quality of healthcare suffers a bit when ransomware is a thing and this this is a lingering effect like the lingering effect of trying to make the hospital it security better makes the hospital worse at at healthcare so it was something like a minute difference because you assume you're jumping through more hoops to do things because of the security and a minute during a heart attack will kill you a lot of the time so that's sad those were some expensive bitcoins in human life. Oh. So the lot has been said about the uh, you know white nationalist culture on the internet and how you know that's the, that's the big argument, right? Is it okay to kill Nazis? You know, video games have taught us this the entire time. I don't know what people are arguing about, but the question is, you know, are these people really like hardcore Nazis, or does the word mean anything? In this case, I think the answer is yes. <laughs> ZDNet has this article about a mysterious hacker that has dumped a database of infamous uh, neo-Nazis. I guess it's the forum, Iron March, and the members of that forum. So, yeah, it's like the names and email addresses. So, eh. But then here's the problem, right? People have immediately gone to work trying to find them, to hunt them down. What What about the academics who joined the forum for research purposes? Or the trolls who know. joined the forums for trolling purposes. I don't know. No <laughs> there are questions. a lot of trolls on forums. So many. <laughs> Do you think the neo Nazis? I guess they would have a lot of trolls, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have a lot of trolls, and I feel like we're fairly <laughs> middle of the road most of the time. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, is it controversial to ask people to be not terrible to one another? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Trina Micro, who has had some uh, security incidents in 2019 and I've been under the spotlight a couple of times 
maybe unfairly in some of those occasions. Uh, they have another one, and this one is totally fair. This one is they've admitted. Trend Micro reveals that customer data was illegally sold following an inside job security incident. Basically, an employee. They hired somebody that took some data, sold it. This was bad. They didn't really catch it. I mean, they caught it, but then they were trying to figure it out. They spent maybe more time than they should have before alerting customers. And this was sales leads, marketing data type of thing. This guy was like, oh, wow, I have access to a lot of data. I bet I could sell this. And he found a buyer. I think it was a he. I'm assuming gender, which is wrong. All of your uh, home automation that you talk to and listens constantly, but you still leave it in your home, even though it's constantly spying on you and listening to you, well, it has a flaw. <laughs> With a laser, researchers say they can hack Alexa, Google Home, or Siri. So basically, you can modulate a laser pointer into the speaker hole of these things, and the smart home thinks it's hearing something. And it's really just the intensity of the laser hitting the piezoelectric element in the uh, in the microphone. So they can use the light the laser to make the smart home assistant hear whatever they want from across the room, or you know, basically anywhere they can get a laser in there so keep your laser out of my speaker hall bro <laughs> i think uh spotify is doing an offer right now where you can if you have the premium i think you can get a google home and I, one of our coworkers is considering it. i was like really he's wow. like they're already sp spying on me it's fine so i imagine you could just put some kind of little shroud in front of this right i mean it would hurt the microphone pickup but it wouldn't stop it because the sound waves could bounce in there my favorite thing is there was some researcher that created a 3D printable brain slug you can put on top of the home assistant and it just makes a white noise into the speaker, which would also physically cover the mic. It also physically cover the mic. And then you say the trigger word to activate the brain slug, which turns off the white noise, and then the home assistant can hear it. It's genius. So watch out for that. Watch out for people pointing lasers into your windows. <laughs> That's the general rule right there. Just go ahead and 3D print the brain slug thing and you'll be all set. Brain slug makes me think of the Animorphs series. Did you guys read those books? <laughs> That was probably more my time than yours, but those were very popular books. And there was a, a race of brain slugs that could infect you. And it was very tragic. No, there are so many. Here's a, here's a pro tip. If you just made the Futurama comment, you're that person. <laughs> don't be that person. People don't like you. Rip the people that pause the video to make the comment. That's mm -hmm. probably already like three people who's done that. <clears throat> well, here at the Level 1 News, when we prep these articles, we see a lot of, hey, I want to send you notifications. Can I do push notifications? And then you got to click and say no. And no, who says yes to this? And why do you do it? Give me 5,000 words on why you do that because I need to understand it. I don't have what personality. But there, the good news is uh, Mozilla recognizes this as the plague that it is. Firefox to hide notification pop-ups by default starting next year. It is going to become what it should have been all along, which is an icon in the URL bar. So if you want notifications from a website, like say the level one forums, because we have that functionality in the forum. If you want to be notified that somebody has replied to your thing without receiving an email, you can click on the little thing and allow the notifications. That's the only use case. And it should not pop up every time. It should have been in the URL bar the whole time. And once you turn it on, it's actually really annoying to turn it off. Where if it's an icon in the URL bar, you can be like, you know what, Tom's Hardware, you don't need those notifications anymore. I'm click, manage click. this, yeah. Yeah. Whereas instead, right now, when you turn it on, you got to go to like settings and preferences, and like 17 mouse clicks later, then you can turn it off. Speaking of things that are in your home that are spying and shouldn't <laughs> be there, the Ring doorbell. It <laughs> is a bad thing. It's bad for you. It's bad for your neighbors. It's bad for the country. But what you didn't know is that it's a security risk, or at least it was. It's not anymore, but it was, and it was pretty bad. Amazon Ring doorbells exposed home Wi-Fi passwords to hackers. That's right. If you set up your Ring doorbell before September of 2019, your home Wi-Fi password was exposed to the internet unencrypted. You should probably change it, like, right now. In plain text, at that. Good job, Amazon engineers. I think that one guy that we always make fun of, uh, was hired for the security because like that's like a really boneheaded like why would you do that and of course if the ring doorbell has one night to shine one night to be the all-star of your home appliances that night is halloween 
and they did not pass up that opportunity. <laughs> Ring watched your kids trick or treat and then bragged about it. So yeah, uh, wh- that is adorable. <laughs> is he holding a knife? No, he's uh, yeeting or uh, what's it? What's it called? Dabbing. Dabbing. He's dabbing. Yeah, yeah. Yeeting. Okay, boomer. Here's a guy stealing a pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> So I don't know how they like collected these. I guess these are the people who gave them permission. We would hope, but probably not. But they, yeah, they released like a video compilation of fun Halloween videos. Yay! Yay! Your child's face p- published on the internet. Yeah, really. Possibly but, without your consent. Well, even if you gave consent, the children in the video are presumably other people's children, right? Yeah. So they didn't give consent. Hmm. And speaking of Amazon, the Amazon warehouse is a dark dystopian future, which I love. <laughs> I really, love it. it really gets the creative juices flowing for the fan fiction. I love getting those packages. <laughs> <laughs> but it is dark, and I recognize that it's dark. And now there is a new kind of technology that makes it even darker. <laughs> Bloomberg has this article about warehouses tracking workers' every muscle movement. You got to read this article, if if for no other reason than like, dude's got a a cell phone size thing like strapped to his shoulder, and he's like, oh yeah, the little the little thing that's strapped to my shoulder helps me to remember to lift with my knees and not my back because if he reaches over uh, a pallet or something to pick up a box, it'll vibrate to let him know that he isn't you know lifting it correctly and he could throw his back out. I like to imagine that it's actually like shocking him a little bit, like a shock collar <laughs> at, the, at the, <laughs> the apex of the stretch, which is most likely to injure him, just to teach him a lesson. I mean, this uh, the the dark side of this is like whenever there is the inevitable, you know, workers' comp claim, uh, Amazon's going to submit this data and be like, "Look, our little thing went off constantly because he wasn't lifting correctly." So it's definitely not a bug in our program, or we didn't design it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally legit, and but we don't need to pay him anything. The obvious, uh, you know, other side effect of this is to measure that that about you. To measure when you're doing it wrong means they're measuring everything. Yeah. It's like Alexa. <laughs> In order for Alexa to know when to answer you, Alexa always records. So they know your performance. They can get a th- feel of, like, even your range of motion and stuff like that. So if you're getting old... And all of a sudden, you're not performing as the way you did before. They have all these metrics. Now, Strongarm, which is this company, when asked about that, were like, well, you know, they could do that, but we like to think that our customers would never do that. <laughs> I think this data is what's going to be used to eventually program the uh, the T-800 uh, helper Amazon warehouse robots well, they, that are going to move things around. Yeah, they talk about that. Like, this data could definitely show you where you could automate. So, like, look, this movement is exactly the same for every worker. That's easy to replicate. Replace those people. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have that story in the nonsense section about the MIT robot dogs. Give them that data next year, T-800s. That's why you have to, like, really keep your skills up and learn, like, some sort of dance move. And then you have to dance <laughs> between <laughs> movements so they can't replicate it. Every third day, roller skates. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about, like, the Amazon warehouse protesters protest against being replaced by robots by yeeting packages around randomly in order to pollute the data. Yeah. So, so the AI can't learn how to properly handle the packages. It's like in Dune, <laughs> where they had to, like, walk goofy on the sand so the sandworms couldn't detect that they were humans. <laughs> you got to do that with your Amazon packages. You got to sand walk them. Oh, and uh, Android has a little problem. Now, Android has this thing, uh, near-field communications, where you can just beam media and stuff. It's similar to, uh, what's Apple's called? AirDrop. AirDrop, yeah. And uh, that's cool because you can just share things with people, but you can share some things that are bad. Android Bug lets hackers plant malware via NFC beaming. It's been patched, but uh, you could NFC beam an executable file, like an APK, and because it came from the NFC beam application, which is trusted, that file would also be trusted when it should not be trusted. You do have to click on it, but you don't get the are you sure you want to sideload this dangerous thing that we're not sure about warning. You just have to click on it. And a lot of people are going to do that. Yeah. They get the notification. It's like, oh, notification. And yeah. it's there too late. Are. There's your problem right there. <laughs> 
Another issue with Android phones, not all Android phones, but some of the big ones, is that they have a, a little bit of a problem with their phone and OS communication. Popular Android phones can be tricked into snooping on their owners. This is a little bit of a nothing burger, but basically uh, if you send AT commands to the cellular modem, you can downgrade the connection or put the modem in a weird state or kick the modem off of a data connection. And the uh, extraneous AT commands will vary from handset vendor to handset vendor, but I think we all knew about the AT commands that were available to the cellular modem. Is this one of those? Uh, I like I like this. Make it look like image. I'm hacking. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hacker typer. Yeah, it's hacker typer on a phone. That that does. That's a cool stock photo though. The way like you can see the thumbs moving, but there's no hands. It's just dark. I'll have to remember to do that for a level one video. But you can that is cool. You can tell that they're not typing enough characters. Yeah, because but, the thumbs are there. But it's a very cool visual. It's going to be in a movie soon. <clears throat> could have there could have been a huge embarrassment for you this last week because you know you might have been a little bit thirsty on valentine's day and for more than just wine you might have sent some texts that really didn't mean you might have been throwing out a wide net out of desperation and you didn't get any responses and that hurt your ego but you were like you know what i really probably shouldn't have done that that was a lot of bad decisions that i made with the, the wrong set of thinking tools and i'm glad those didn't get sent oh wait a ton of people received text messages overnight that were originally sent on Valentine's Day. That was overnight, I think, on November 6th to 7th. So what happened was there was a server somewhere that had entered a weird state, and text messages sent on November 14th were queued by the server but never actually sent. They didn't get around to fixing it until November, which... February 14th. February 14th. What, or they didn't fix it in, until... You said, you said November 14th. Oh, right. Sorry. Actually... Yeah, Valentine's Day. They didn't like what kind of IT department has a server that's down from February 14th to November 6th or 7th. They just check it and they're like, "Whoops, my bad." And then <laughs> well, they just hit send on all of them. Do you think they had uh, you know, something hooked up to that so they were monitoring it and they're like, "Let's just reboot this guy." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> Yes. That's a lot of text messages. That's a lot of eggplants going out. It was like 168,000 messages, in, but it was across a whole bunch of different cellular providers. And uh, yeah, a lot of people got text messages from dead people because people, oh. people, a lot of people died in that, that, that time period. That'd kind of be like, I mean, it'd be sad, but also kind of like a nice thing, you know, a text from beyond the grave. <laughs> Do you think there were a lot of like, you need to get tested text messages? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. There's going, to be, there's going to be a lot of people that really legit think those messages are from beyond the grave, and it's just there's no explaining oh, it to them. There is going to be at least one story where it's like, you know, we broke up in uh, January, and we haven't talked to each other, and but then we got that message in November, and we realized that we were right for each other. And we got back <laughs> together. That'll probably show up somewhere on Reddit, but it'll be a farce generated for <laughs> fake internet points. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get to the end and you'll realize that it's like the lyrics to the Fresh Prince theme or something. So That's gotten me a couple times. <laughs> cam girls. Everybody likes cam girls, right, Krista? I, I guess. Krista doesn't like cam I don't girls. Really, I don't really understand the appeal, but Well, whatever. the people of, uh, was it Spain? Spain. Mostly Spain. Spain. Barcelona, they love cam girls, but they might be embarrassed. A network of cam girl sites has exposed millions of users and the sex workers. So this was in Europe. Not just Spain was affected, but a lot of people in Spain were affected because it was popular there, apparently. Uh, this company that provides these services for buyers and sellers of whatever this is uh, didn't really secure their system. At all. Yeah. It was wide open. And I guess there were payments? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say there would be financial information almost... Assuredly. It'd be so, like Twitch, but I would assume. Amateur.tv and webcamporno.xxx.net. That's a right to the point name, isn't it? Placer cams. That sounds almost innocent. So, yeah, these were all under the same umbrella, and for whatever reason, they just didn't secure it. Those poor cam girls. What will they do? Twitch just needs to make a category. Four cam girls. Krista, they can't do that. It would be more secure. But people <laughs> and would then, be outraged. But just put it in its own category. 
and then it's not polluting but, all the other categories and people who want that kind of content can find it and it's just not hidden away in the weird 16 spots. 16 year old boys who keep those girls afloat <laughs> would not be able to access it. With their parents' credit card, which is technically fraud. <laughs> I don't know. These girls got to eat, Krista. You're threatening their way of life. That's what Goldman Sachs needs I'm, to open up next is uh, a way for like 13 year olds to get credit cards that are very limited. I'm sure that's probably already happening. I'm, I'm suggesting regulation of some sort, making it easier to find the content instead of having to hide it and making it so it's secure so your clients aren't possibly losing all of their financial data, which is what happened here. Yeah, well, I mean, I think Twitch would argue that they have much better data security than amateurs.tv. Yeah, and who could say why? <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow. When we've oh, got, that it? we got business. Tomorrow is a crazy day. It's pure business. Wow. Because the business is so massive this business week. Business is popping. That it's uh, almost almost 30 stories all by itself. And then Friday will be a crazy Friday with three, three sections. sections. It's chaos. Whew. This whole week is chaos. Every video. Mm-hmm.